Hey everybody, really excited to be able to talk to you today about counter. So this is one of our first of, of many masterclasses where we're going to be talking about different features, different functions, but really how counter can create more value for you. So just to present today, I'm Craig. I've spoken to many, many of you before, but if you haven't spoken to me before, um, I'm a senior account manager here at Counter. I've worked with many teams, always working with our product team, with our support team, with our sales team. We really sit uh, in the central part of, of the service part of the business to be able to help connect our customers to everything they need and make sure we're always getting feedback and helping everyone get the most value out of Counter. So what account managers can do for you and or where the account manager team is coming from, we are heavily based on industry experience. So a lot of our team has been in the industry before, if not all our team has worked in the industry before. Uh, and we really just wanna help find the most efficient and effective ways to use Counter for all our customers. We're also gonna start looking at the perfect menus and what that means to you, how we can get fast and consistent uh, workflows to make, you know, great customer experiences every day when your team is communicating with each other just to be able to serve the customers and get you know the best experiences out there. We're also going to start looking at reporting abilities uh, but the main thing we're going to touch on is F&B splits which is really an industry practice but how we can also start to move beyond that and start getting a whole lot more out of understanding product performance. Today's webinar we're probably looking at around 20, 20 to five minutes. Uh, we'll see how we go. Happy to go a bit longer if needed. And don't worry if you need to go, we will be sending out a recording and a lot of useful guys off the back of this webinar. So to introduce you to the account managers, we've got quite a, a growing team, a large team that's, that's come up. So uh, we've got Ed, who's complete cocktail nerd, uh, makes some great cocktails and he's probably worked in some of Sydney's best venues, best bars, and has a lot of hands-on experience with the tools that those businesses need to have running incredibly efficiently to be successful. Uh, myself, I worked for a number of tech companies. I uh, worked for Apple for a very long time, focusing on how technology shapes and builds the best possible customer experiences. I've also got Elliot, who's total QSR junkie, worked for a few brands, and again, just very passionate about the industry. And Arjun has probably done any every job manageable in a bar, and so just really basing our team's knowledge uh, is coming from experience. Why we're here is just to help you extract every drop of value that you can from counter, making sure that you're on the right plan, you're using the right features, you're using what you need and not missing out on anything and also not overpaying or over under utilizing anything that we have. So how do we do this? Uh, for a lot of you who have joined us more recently, you would have helped, or we would have helped you get set up and running. Uh, we have our setup workflows to help you get your hardware connected, get your menu set up, uh, get your workflows up and running, make sure your payments, your daily processes, everything you need to be able to serve your customers is exactly where it needs to be and ready to go when you open your doors. Uh, once we can move past that and we got the basics out of the way, we want to help you move even further forward and start helping find efficiencies in the business, make the most out of what we have to offer and reduce waste is what we're all about. So reducing waste of time, reducing waste of resources, anything that's possible that uh, make things better, that's what our focus is. We also have master classes. We're going to start looking at different, um, like today, like different elements of what counter can do for specific parts of the industry or specific features we have. I'm going to have a lot of content coming out just to be able to, you know, empower you and empower your teams to better use what we have. We also have a lot more to come, uh, but you know, stay tuned. 2019 is going to be a very big year. So I think it's, it's best to get started. Let's jump right in to counter just going to switch to the point of sale and here we go so here we are 
counter point of sale. So a lot of you have seen this many times before. What we want to do here is go through a few examples of different menus and we've combined uh, a lot of different features here and what we feel is the best use case of a lot of these features. And we have seen many menus over a long period of time. We've seen very strange looking menus that, you know, we built a long time ago, but weren't as effective, but while we bring more and more people to better features and better use case. So you're not tapping on that iPad too many times. It's nice and easy to get the right order the first time and more face-to-face -face time with your customers, which is the most important thing. Let's start off with, maybe before we dive into coffee, let's actually look at pastries. This is probably the most basic form. You've seen this kind of menu before, simply selecting items and appearing on the right-hand side. No option sets, no variants, but just nice and straightforward. If we're moving towards sandwiches, maybe we just wanna add a basic option set just to make sure we're getting the right order every time and no one's getting the wrong sandwich. So if I wanted to get the Reuben, I want mine toasted, but the BLT for Ed, he doesn't like it toasted. The modifiers, which are in the option sets, are grouped easily. So on your production docket, it will print out. You also notice that the rules for this option set, you have to choose one, but you can't choose more than one. So you don't have to click it and then hit save. When you, so you just can select what you want and it skips to the screen where you want. So the order is nice and easily being seen and communicated to the kitchen. With breakfast, this is another a good use case of a very simple option set. So what we're doing here, you'll notice that I'm selecting the items, but not all of them come up with a option set. So the side bowl didn't come up with one. You can see I add another one there. I can always select that item and then be able to see the option set. Oh, actually that one didn't have the option set. So bacon and eggs, that's a good idea. So for bacon and eggs, it's always gonna to wanna to ask, you know, is it poached, scrambled or fried? I have to select one, I can't move on. So I'm gonna get a poached egg. And here I can choose my bread on sourdough toast. I can see exactly what's been ordered with exactly the modifiers needed. And it only took two taps on the screen to get the order exactly right. If I want to see another way of doing that, so the eggs Benedict, so maybe I wanna make some changes, I can go back into the item by selecting it in the edit view and then going to options and then easily be able to pick the sides I want. So this is optional. You can always get back to it and I can say, you know what, I want side bacon and maybe some tomatoes and I hit save. You can see, even though I didn't order into that order most recently, I could always get back to it and add the sides I wanted and it's nice and accurate. Okay, lunch. So what we've done here, we've again added simple option set and we've just got here what we call an on-screen modifier. So I've made that color yellow, just so it's a bit outlined and it's in line with it being cheese. So it's a modifier, so if I click on it, it's not gonna let me add a modifier straight. We all know how modifiers work. It's kind of like the soy milk to a cappuccino. It, you have to have a product that comes before it. And because a lot of people like to have cheese, what we're saying with this menu, we can easily add cheese to any item and select the salad and add the cheese. But we can see there's an option set there. So we wanna find out what that option set is. We can just select the, the item or the product on the right hand side, go into options, and we've got all our dietary requirements. So we've got an option set called dietary requirements. And I can say, you know what, I have a nut allergy and I want a gluten-free option. So I can see exactly what is needed for that order and the cheese is being charged accurately for that modifier. We've also got much the same thing if you've got your lunch or your dinner menu. So the great thing about this, you can have one option set with the modifiers and options within them linked to multiple products. In back office, if I changed just that one option set and added something else, it would affect all my products. You don't have to manage everything individually. So you may have some customers out there who were using what we used to call um, product mods and you used to have the modifications done one by one for each product. Now you can easily manage 
all your option sets against all your products. If you're using older mods or you find that the information is not talking the best way possible, or you have to manage a lot of individual products and it's getting cumbersome, that's why we're here to help you find better workflows and, and more of those efficiencies. So let's, let's actually dive into coffee because coffee, we've got quite a few things going on here and you'll notice we've got items with a V. So these are, variants or variant products. We've got modifiers on the screen because these are commonly used modifiers. And we've also got option sets hidden here as well. So if I go into a variant product, it's gonna say flat white. It's gonna ask whether it's a regular or a large. And it's gonna add the item. If I go into the item, I can go options and see all the option sets linked here. And you see these have been put in a specific order. So not every time do I use coconut milk, not every time does someone get a ristretto shot, not every time does someone want it extra hot, but all these options here, three sugars, maybe a little bit of hot water on the side, and then the BYO cup. So it's not your average order, but you could see how easily I could get that level of detail. But if someone just wants a cappuccino, regular cap, done. Two taps nice and simple so you can see that blend of being able to find the exact detail for the you know maybe one in a hundred customers that comes in you're going to serve them the best way possible but for the other 99 you're finding the most efficient and easiest way to get them exactly what they need you may want to have your modifiers on the screen so if my friend is getting a latte large with soy milk even easier so we can go through how you can have a blend of pop-up you know, pop automatic option sets, groups of option sets, variants, and on-screen modifiers. Some of these terms may be a little bit newer, but it's completely okay. We're gonna send the perfect hot drinks menu to after this webinar, and it's gonna go through the best way to use our features and getting that blend between accuracy and spending more time or less time and finding speed of service. To have another quick look, the other option set I like to give an example of is with wine menus. So we have many bars using this, and if you're not already, this is a great way to get that level of detail. So bottle of wine, let's say I want to get the Jed Limited Melbeck. It's going to ask me what year I'll go for the 2014. We've attached an option set asking how many glasses. You have to choose the number of glasses. And so it easily pops up and says four. So when that's sent to the bar, they know exactly what the order's uh, for and also how many glasses they need. Very easily done. So you never bring the wrong amount of glasses or having staff going to and from tables. Uh, just make sure you're getting the right level of detail the right time. Just makes it a whole lot smoother and a whole lot easier. Another great use of option sets for drinks at the bar would be our how we've set up spirits here. So if I would like to get some Smirnoff, uh, I can easily see here what mix I'm going for. And I've also popped in here, neat or on the rocks. Again, the rules have been precisely in a way that I can only choose one. So if I want tonic, vodka and tonic, and maybe the Bacardi on the rocks. Nice and easily done. Everything's gonna be well connected and sent to the bar. So the last one I'll go through is, maybe we'll do two more, how are we going for time? I'm gonna take a look at Coffee Rush. This is probably gonna take a very short amount of time. This is for, uh, if you're gonna have maybe a category for a very busy time of the day, uh, maybe you're only doing takeaway coffees, maybe it's in an event, this is, very simple, it's gonna have regular and large, you're gonna be writing on the lid and you just wanna have 50 cent modifiers. So just keeping the workflow, maybe not as accurate, but this is when you just need to have that absolute speed of service, minimal time, face to screen time, maximum face to face time with your customers, just to get the accurate price and then be able to take payment and move on to the next customer and make sure everything is moving as fast as possible. Pizza is a good one as well. So I just want to touch on pizza because 
half half additional toppings um, there's a lot of different modifications you can make to pizza different bases so if it was even just getting a margarita pizza i can easily choose deep pan and you know what i know it's margarita but i like to get extra cheese and extra oregano but if i was gonna get a half and half pizza maybe i want to choose ultra thin for that one and i want to choose half capriciosa half marinara and I actually want to get extra mushrooms on the whole thing easily be able to select exactly what's needed never have to tap on the screen more times than you have to and then be able to get the exact order over to the kitchen with less confusion if your pause is not working in the best way for you if your pause menu is not laid out the way you would think it should be uh, please reach out to us. There's also going to be a, a booking link where you can make some one-on-one -on -one time with the team and we're going to use our industry experience and our experience with all our customers had building menus using counter and outside of counters working with so many businesses to find the best way to help you better connect with teams and better connect with your customers. So this is the main focus of what we're talking about today, but we also want to look at on the reporting side, how do we take useful information, at least at the top level and really quickly and accurately about what's happening in the point of sale and how does it affect the use of my resources as a team, my resources of time, and also what's performing well in different seasons. So in the past, a lot of you have used back office reporting and a lot of you have also started to look at counter insights. So we wanna help show the first steps towards counter insights and that is reporting groups. So we're gonna jump into what that looks like in when the information comes through. So this is a, a, our test account that we have at the front of our office. We're always putting sales through. Looks like we've been putting a lot of test sales through in the last week. So this particular dashboard is called the site summary last week. This is available to all customers though. So it's called site summary last week. If you haven't, if never used Counter Insights, if you, sign up or enable counter insights light is no cost whatsoever and you will get this exact same dashboard we'll show you the week that's passed and give you an overview we're going to have some webinars going through this one in detail next week uh, but today we can see here as we're flowing through lots of information but this is exactly what we want to be looking at here this report here gives us a breakdown of our reporting group. So I can see last week, food made up just over half, uh, and then retail was a big chunk of that. So we have our coffee retail products in there as well, some of the examples. We still have a few products there that are not categorized, so we can still go in and put into reporting groups. It's worth noting that reporting groups are retroactive, so you can change your reporting groups and look at your past data. So if I just wanted to have a basic F&B split, or if I want to get very granular, I can look at the past information under a new lens with Counter Insights. But I want to better understand my drinks that are selling here from last week because I have bar staff, I have baristas, I have uh, you know expensive drinks that are being sold. I want to make sure that I'm looking for ways to reduce wastage across all aspects of the business. So what I'm about to do will be for anyone on the view, share or build plan for counter insights i can click on it and i can drill down into an individual product performance so we want to give everyone the fundamental information need and the, the revenue attributed to those reporting groups uh, but the next step once you need to know more about what's happening in those reporting groups counter insights view would be the best starting point so here we're looking at the Drinks reporting group, we can see the total X tax revenue for the past seven complete days. I can change that if need be. So I can look over a wider or smaller period of the day. I can see my top selling products. And I can see how this specific reporting group is performing over different times of the day. So I've had my coffee reporting group, I could see how that was performing. If I had my lunch and my breakfast reporting groups, I could see how those items are performing at certain times. And I also get a breakdown of every item, the amount that was sold, X tax, ink tax, and including tax. If I'm on Insights Share, 
I can schedule this report and send it to all the team members that need it. This is the bar. My bar manager definitely needs to see how things are working. I could schedule this to be a weekly report and then also maybe just over the weekend so we know our specific trade periods are getting the reports they need to be able to make better decisions. If you want to see how easy it is to be able to sign and create reporting groups, this is the place you want to start. So if you're going into back office, it's going to go to products. You'll notice you have a column here which says reporting group. If you do not have a column for reporting group, just means we haven't enabled the Count Insights yet, which is really easy to do. Just going to go to My Counter. And it's going to load up parts of the platform which are visible here. If you select Launch Insights, or say Launch once it's enabled, or Checkout Insights, you can select. It'll show you available plans. If you're not sure which one you want to do and you don't want to invest anything just yet, there will be a light plan available where you will be able to see this information. So once you've enabled the life plan of Count Insights and you can see your past week, you'll see a lot of information. You may not have your reporting groups set up yet. So you're going to come back into products, go into reporting groups up the top. From here, you can easily create as many reporting groups as you want. Just by simply hitting add reporting group in the top right and naming these accordingly, you can always delete them if need be. And then by navigating back to products, you have this column where you can sign a reporting group. Now you can only assign one reporting group at a time, but you can always change that reporting group. If you do change a reporting group, give uh, the counter platform and insights just about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to be able to get that new information and then we'll start feeding through. You can easily select multiple products on the right hand side. Then using the bulk menu option, assign a reporting group and choose from specific reporting groups or selecting individual ones from the drop down menu. Worth we'll be sending a guide about assigning reporting groups and creating them because this even um, is on Insights Lite is very valuable. Uh, businesses always like to know the F&B split, but we see a lot of you know uh, breakfast, lunch venues really wanting to know their sides menus, how they're performing, the add-ons, anything with a high GP, um, all those parts of your menu which can contribute the, the biggest impact to your business in, in those hours of trade. I'm going to have a look here. It looks like we've got a chat come through. Um, is there a way we can allocate products to different account codes in Xero? So not quite on this topic, but yes, there is. In the Xero integration, there is the ability to map specific products to specific accounts. When you're mapping out your accounts, it's always going to be the default mapping, and then you can get granular. So thank you, Martin, for that, for that question. I'm going to take a screenshot just so it's sitting on my desktop waiting for me directly after this. And I'll be sending you a guide alongside the other ones just to help you get more out of that. And I'll send you my booking link. So if you want to find out more about zero integration, about menus, about counter insights, that's why we're here. Just going to have a look how we're going for time. So it looks like we're, we're just before the half hour. Now, if anyone has any questions, feel free to, to jump into chat. I'm happy to take some questions and answer some now. If I can, if it's something I can't, then we can always come back to them later. Um, if you would like your team to, to watch some of, the, some of this video and go over just to get some ideas, we'll be sending a recording on this webinar as well. But the, the two main guides, we're going to be sending one about great restaurant menu and a great coffee menu or hot drinks menu. Uh, they're great learning points, even if it's in your specific menu, to see how the different building blocks of your counterparts, your products, your modifiers, your variants, and your option sets can be optimized to be able to find those efficiencies, less taps on screen, more face-to-face -face time with your customers. Um, so if anyone's got any questions, please do pop them into the chat. Uh, your menu bar may be towards the bottom or towards the top, depending on how your window opened. Looks like there's, there's no more questions flowing through. I want to thank everyone for spending some time with me today. Uh, keep an eye on your inbox. As I said, we're going to send some follow-up guides and a recording, but you're also going to be getting some, some more messages from us. So the account management team, we're going to have more masterclasses, more webinars, more information coming your way. And we're really keen to hear what you guys have to say and start, 
better engaging to make sure you're getting the most out of counter. Thank you so much. This is Craig saying good day. Ciao.